Today, we're starting a brand new series of videos on terrain shaders. Let's go. So about five years ago, I created a video series on building environment in Unreal. And this is the environment that we created together in that series. Since then, my channel has shifted to focus on creating shaders in both Unreal and in Unity. And recently, Unity announced that in version 6.3, now in beta, they're adding official support for creating terrain shaders using Shader Graph. So with that announcement, now is the perfect time to revisit the topic of terrain shaders and show how to make them both in Unreal and in Unity. In this series, I'm gonna show you how to build terrain layers, how to blend layers together, how to break up tiling artifacts, and how to use effects like displacement, parallax mapping, and side projection for steep cliffs. Toward the end of this series, I'm also gonna show you a technique I developed for creating extremely efficient terrain that could work well for mobile devices. If all of this sounds good to you, subscribe to the channel so you can follow along. All right, let's get started. There are two main things you need to do when starting a new terrain shader. Look at reference and make a plan. Let's start with reference. It's very important to collect reference images when you're getting started. If you're trying to create a realistic looking environment, it's really important to go out and look at the real world. You can, if you can find a real location that's similar to what you're trying to make, that is ideal. Take lots of photos, especially of the ground materials. If you can't find a real life location, you can use Google searches to find images. Grab as many photos of you can of the types of environment you want to build. You especially want to look for pictures that show the types of materials that make up the ground, how they blend with each other, what causes a material to show up in one place and not in another, and what types of rules control the placement of materials. In my case, I'm building a forest stream environment so I did a bunch of searches for forest stream, mountain creek, and terms like that. I collected all of my images, and then I used a software tool called Pure Ref to lay them all out on a board like this. I grouped them based on what they show. So I have a section of images that show uh, how streams are shaped, a section that shows what rocks in the stream look like, a section over here that shows what the trees near the stream look like, and most importantly for our case, uh, I have a section down here that shows what the materials look like in the forest around the stream. So now that I've got my images together, I want to take a close look at them to identify features and characteristics that I want to use in my environment that I'm building. In the materials section here, I can see that the stream beds are made of lots of rounded pebbles. So I wanna use a rounded pebbles material for the stream bed in my project. I can also see mossy ground, dirt with leaves, and dirt with roots. So I'm gonna to put together a set of materials, and as I do, I wanna look for these, moss, dirt with leaves, and rounded pebbles. All right, so next it's important to make a plan, specifically about where the different material types are gonna go. Terrain shaders can be expensive to render, and if you just start making your terrain without making a plan first, you'll probably end up with a terrain shader that's more expensive to render than it needs to be. Terrain shaders are constructed in layers, where each layer is a different material. If you can use fewer layers, the terrain will render faster. So it's a good idea to think about what types of materials you're going to need and try to minimize the total number of layers you're using. 
Both Unreal and Unity have the ability to separate the terrain into different chunks where each chunk can have its own unique material. So, for example, if your map has one area that has a forest stream in it and another area that's just forest without the stream, you could leave out the layers that are specific to the stream in the chunk that doesn't have a stream, so that chunk can use fewer layers and render faster. It's also possible to add additional materials on the terrain using decals instead of terrain layers. When I originally made this map, we come over here, you can see that I have this material that has the, uh, the roots on it underneath the trees, but I only put this roots material in areas that were right around the trees. And I could have done this as a decal instead of a layer. So with decals, you only pay the performance cost for that part of the material right around where the decal is placed. But if you make it a layer, you're paying for it everywhere. So it's really good if you have material effects that are localized to apply those effects as decals rather than full on terrain layers. All right, so as I said, very important, before you begin to build the shader itself, look at reference images to figure out what materials you need and make a plan to minimize the number of shaders you'll be using on any given chunk of terrain. So the next thing to do is to find or to make some material textures that you'll use for your terrain. There are a lot of different places that you can find these. Uh, here I've pulled up the Epic Fab store, and this is the library of Quixel Megascans uh, materials. You can also get uh, materials and textures from textures.com, which is a great source. And you can get materials and textures from the Unity Asset Store. And if you like to use Substance Designer and Substance Painter, Adobe also has uh, the Adobe Substance Library, which has, you know, quite a big range of these types of materials. So you'll want to find the materials that you're going to use. Um, based on what you identified from looking at the reference images. Now, sometimes when you download these materials, in the description of the materials, there'll be a mention of the amount of area, the surface area that these materials cover. And if you can get this information, it's really helpful. Um, you know, make a note of that uh, to save once you start making your, your material in your game. These materials have very subtle scale cues in them like this one has little little pine cones and leaves and things and if you can match the scale in your game or in your project with the scale of the the scan in reality you'll end up with uh, much more realistic results okay so i'm going to go ahead and choose a couple of different materials that we can use for uh, for our project and once you've chosen your materials, you're going to end up with something like this. You'll have a color map, you'll have a normal map, and then you'll have a bunch of other grayscale maps. Here I have an ambient occlusion, a cavity map, a height map or displacement map, and a roughness map. And it's really important that you not leave them all individual like this. So right now I have six different maps. And if we were to bring these into Unreal or Unity individually, uh, this would be really expensive. And the reason that it's expensive is every layer in our terrain is gonna have this many maps. So if every layer has six maps and we have 24, uh, or we have four layers, that means we're sampling 24 textures. And texture sampling is one of the most expensive things that shaders do. So if you're sampling 24 textures, that's going to be a way more expensive shader than it really needs to be. So what we need to do is use a technique called channel packing. And let me just go over that really quick. I know I've gone over this on my channel before, um, but it's important and, and worth repeating. So 
this is a method um, in this particular scheme that I'm illustrating here of reducing those six textures down to just three. We have a color texture and we have a normal map here in the middle. And then we have a third texture that has all of our masks. So it has our ambient occlusion. It has our roughness or smoothness. It has our metallic map and it has our height. So we've managed to take it from six textures down to just three. And now if we have, uh, if we build our shader with four layers with three textures each, that's going to be 12 samples or half as many as we had before. That's going to be a pretty significant savings, but we can do even better than that. And so let me show you how we can improve and, and do even fewer texture samples. So if we take a look at our color texture down here in the alpha, the alpha was available for opacity, but we don't need opacity in our terrain material. So we're not going to use that in our normal map. We're not using the alpha channel and we don't need to store the Z data of our normal map because that Z data is something that we can calculate later in the shader and it'll be super cheap to calculate that not not very expensive and so for our normal map we only really need two channels so we need three channels for color two channels for normal and then uh, most terrain doesn't use metal and so we don't need a metallic mask uh, and we we may end up using height or not um, but kind of what I'm trying to illustrate here is we really only have uh, like seven essential channels that we need. And so what we can do is pack this data a little bit tighter. And uh, a potential scheme for packing could look something like this. We have red, green, and blue of color in our color texture. And then we put the smoothness or the roughness in the alpha channel. For a normal map, we put the X and the Y of the normal in the red and green. Then we put the ambient occlusion or the opacity in the blue. And then the alpha channel is our height, which is optional if we need height or not. And so we're able to get rid of that mask texture and just have our color texture and our normal texture with the extra data packed in there. And we're able to have a nice uh, terrain material representation with just two textures instead of with six as we had originally. So again, you know, if we have uh, a terrain shader that has four layers, uh, two textures each, that's just eight texture samples instead of our original 24. So we're able to pack the data really efficiently and do just two texture samples uh, to, to get a material representation. And that's really important, especially as we start stacking up those layers and getting more materials uh, into our shader. So this is what we're going to do. And you can do this in multiple different ways. In Photoshop itself, I can just take the individual layers here and uh, I can use my channel tab. I know this is kind of small. I'm sorry about that. I can use my channels here and I can select the red channel, paste something into that, select the green channel, paste something into that. And so it's pretty easy in Photoshop to just pack these materials together. Um, but it is important for savings. And so please do this. Like when you originally get these materials, you know, you're going to start out with, like I said, with maybe up to six different maps, but you want to pack them together as I showed in that illustration so that you end up with two. Another way of doing it uh, is using Substance Designer. I really like uh, Adobe Substance 3D Designer. And so what you can see here is I've got my, all of the different maps that I brought in from the Quixel Mega Scans. And I've created this, um, this node here called Make Material, which is packing all of those uh, textures together. If we just kind of so if we open that graph here, you can see we've got our color texture going in there and then we're packing our, our materials together. And then if we look at this one, we're making 
our CR texture, that's our color and our roughness, and we're making our normal occlusion and height, NOH. And so if we come in and take a look at this one, you can see that it's it's not doing anything complicated. It's just putting the color into the color channel. It's putting the roughness into the alpha channel. And then for the normal, we're splitting it out and just taking the red and green channels. And then we're taking this specular level here and multiplying it with the ambient occlusion and then putting the height into the alpha channel. So here we're able to, uh, you know, create these node networks in Substance Designer for creating our color and our roughness and our normal occlusion and height. And then we can just plug all our textures into that and get the results out. I like to do that because it's, I think it's a little bit faster than using Photoshop. But, you know, like I said, there's a lot of different ways of, of doing this. So once we're done with our channel packing, we'll end up with just two textures. Here is our color and our roughness texture. And here is our normal occlusion and height texture. So my color texture has the color in the red, green, and blue. And then in the alpha channel, it has the roughness. And my normal map has the normal components X and Y in the red and green channels. And then it has the occlusion in the blue channel and it has the height in the alpha channel. So we're able to pack all of the data from our terrain textures into just two textures. And I'll say it again, this is important. Uh, and another reason it's important is in our terrain textures, when we start to do tile breakup, sometimes we're gonna need to sample these textures multiple times. And so if we have six of them per material, and we have to sample all six of them multiple times, it just gets crazy in terms of performance. So it's really important to pack these uh, terrain material description textures as tightly as we can, uh, just to cut down on the number of texture samples required in the final shader. All right, so we're gonna bring these textures into uh, either Unreal or Unity. And then next week, I'm gonna show you how to unpack the textures and to start making our terrain shaders. So your homework assignment for this week is to uh, take a look at reference, to make a plan for what you wanna do, uh, how you wanna build your, um, your terrain shader, and then go out and collect the uh, material samples that you are gonna use uh, as you follow along with this tutorial. I don't wanna tell you which ones to use um, because there's so many and and uh, if you just use mine, you'll end up with an environment or a terrain shader that looks exactly like the one that I'm gonna make and what's the, what's the point in that? You should go out and find your own that you like, that you wanna use uh, and then follow along uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna build a really cool terrain shader. All right, well, that's a, that about does it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we went over uh, making a plan. We went over taking a look at reference. We went over collecting the textures that you're gonna use for your materials and then doing channel packing to pack all of the different uh, descriptive texture, uh, material textures into just two for our terrain. So go ahead and do that for your homework and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching everybody.